Welcome to another episode of Fight Briefing, UFC 254, coming up this weekend, Khabib versus Gaethje, in two days actually. We are on episode number 33, how are you guys doing? This is going to be a recorded episode today, we're doing a premiere so you guys can still chat in the live chat, but uh, we got some stuff going on today, so we're going to get this done quick, we're going to fly through it. UFC 254 coming up this weekend. A very exciting fight. Dana White says it's probably the most trending fight uh, in UFC history. Kind of difficult to um, wrap your head around that one given all of the fire cards that we've had in the past. But hopefully he's right. And hopefully it is as big a night as he is portraying it to be. So we're going to go through the main card. Talk about who's my fan picks for... Um, the main card of UFC 254 and then get your guys' picks in the comment section or in the chat. Uh, it's not live right there, but that's technically where you guys would be. Let's talk about who's first on the main card. Kicking it off, we have Magomed Ankalev versus Ian Kutilaba. An awesome fight. I love this fight. They've been trying to put it together for a while now, so I'm really excited to see this one. Uh, Lauren Murphy versus Lilia Shakirova which is kind of interesting to me because this was supposed to be a different fight to start off and Shockey Rob was coming in on a um, short notice. We also have Jacob Malcone versus Philip Hawes. I don't know if I pronounced Jacob's name right, but we're going to go with it. Alexander Volkov versus Walt Harris. Walt Harris coming back uh, for the second fight after his long delay. And then our co-main event, Robert Whitaker versus Jared Kennedy, are going to be a fire fight in our main event. I cannot wait for this one. Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Justin Gaethje. Love them both. Both are my favorites, but I only had, I only could pick one, right? So let's talk about the first fight of the main card. Magomed Ankalev versus Ian Kutilaba. This fight has been a huge struggle for the UFC, that's for sure. This is turning into kind of a Khabib Tony thing, if you ask me. Similar. It's the fifth time the UFC is trying to put together this fight. Hopefully it's the last time. Now, their last fight was a debatable stoppage. I don't know how many of you guys remember or got to see the last fight. Um, some say Kuti Lava was playing possum and he fooled the ref. Others say he was actually rocked and the ref was just doing his job trying to protect the fighter. I don't really know where you all stand with that or with regard to that stoppage but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter it's kind of irrelevant because we are getting that rematch now now on the first fight we did see Ankala return some serious heat to Kutilaba Kutilaba is trying to throw those nasty combinations that he's really good at and Ankala was just not having it and he was willing to throw everything Kutilaba was throwing at him I have a feeling we're going to see that again in this rematch um add to that his dangerous ground game Ankalev I I feel that Kutilaba does have a lot to worry about in this fight Kutilaba has some extremely dangerous combinations to, to in his striking though so um if he can stay focused on what he intends to throw at Ankalev I think he'll be okay but given how vulnerable he can be um against an opponent like this who has that dangerous ground game who's extremely well-rounded who's extremely willing to to throw um I say that Kutilab is probably not going to be as willing to throw those combinations or he's probably going to get distracted and he's not going to really focus on those combinations as well so I went with Ankalev by decision in this fight let me know who you guys have in the um premiere chat or comment section if you're watching the replay Moving on to the next fight of the card, Lauren Murphy versus Lilia Shakirova. Um, I like this fight, but I actually kind of don't care, to be quite honest. I like it because they at least tried to put together a pretty pretty good fight, given the circumstances. It was supposed to be Lauren Murphy versus Cynthia Cavillo, um, but unfortunately COVID pushed Cavillo out of the card, so they ended up having to find a short-notice fighter to step in. I like that they didn't just push Lauren Murphy off the card. And they they were willing to find someone to be a new dance partner. But you can tell that this fight was... um, Shaki Rova was just willing to take the challenge. Like, nobody else, it seemed, was willing to take the challenge on this one. Which kind of explains why Shaki Rova is on the main card. I know we were discussing it yesterday during um, TGIW as to why she was on the main card. This is why. It's just a short notice fight and nobody else is really willing to take this fight on short notice. Because Lauren Murphy is a very challenging opponent for, for a lot of fighters. 
Um, Shocky Rova, she does seem to enjoy the striking aspect of fighting. I'm not sure I would call her a great s striker. Based on the footage I've seen, I tried to find what I could. Um, her grappling, it's good. It's it's not great either. All, er, she's she's developing, I would say. She's developing in all areas, but she's not great in all areas. And quite honestly, it's clear that this fight is going to be extremely challenging for her. I learned my lesson on the last card about picking TKOs in women's fights, especially ones that come in on short notice. So I'm simply going to go the distance here. I say Lauren Murphy is going to take the, the win by decision. She could finish the fight given the level of experience that Shaki Roba has. I just don't see that happening. This is probably going to go to decision. It's going to go in Murphy's favor for sure, though. There's, there's no doubt in my mind it's going to go into Murphy's favor. Now, this next fight is pretty interesting to me. And I'll tell you why. Um, Phil Hawes versus Jacob Malcone. We talked about this a little bit on the last show as well about why these guys are on the main card. Both men are making their UFC debuts on this card. I do agree with Moss that it is a little bit strange to see this on the main card. Not really sure what the UFC was going for here. Uh, the only reasonable explanation that I can really consider is the fact that Malcone has close relations with Robert Whitaker, who is the co-main event on this card. Hawes does seem to be a pretty skilled fighter, though. And I think, um, I think this was kind of a layup fight put together, which is a little bit unfortunate because it would have been nice to see uh, Malcone have a little bit more of an even matchup. We saw him on the Contender Series, Haas. He did get a KO win. And then before that, if you look up some footage of him, uh, he does pretty, pretty well in his fights against his, his former opponents. There's not quite much footage on Malcone um, that I was able to find. If you guys find it, feel free to drop it on the MMAholes.com. So it's pretty difficult to assess this fight, but I'm going to say I'm going to go on a whim on this fight. Given that we have two debut fighters, we've only seen one in the Contender Series I'm going to go on a whim and say that given the lack of experience that we really have for Malcone in comparison to Hawes, Malcone may not see the end of this fight. And Hawes does have that knockout power. So I'm going to say Hawes by KOTKO in the second round. But this could this is one of those fights that could very well go either way. So keep that in mind. Just because um, we don't have that, that footage of Malcone or as much of that footage from Malcone, um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't sleep on the guy. All right. So the next fight coming up, Alexander Volkov versus Walt Harris. There's a couple reasons I like this fight. I think Walt Harris is a pretty interesting fighter to watch. Volkov can be interesting um, with some of his fights. I'm a bit worried after we saw Walt Harris's latest return since those unfortunate events that took place with his daughter. Um, he didn't seem like he was fully healed from that situation before he decided to come back. And we saw him, we saw that in him during his last fight. He did fail to capitalize on um, a pretty winning situation in that fight. So I worry that maybe we might see a little bit of that in this. Maybe he has had enough time to heal at this point or to kind of put himself in a good mental state. Um, I'm sure a situation like that is never easy for anyone to have to go through. Uh, that being said, he does have brute force in his hands, Walt Harris. And don't, don't uh, underestimate this guy. I suppose my biggest worry with him would be take, getting taken down. Him on the feet, he's superb. I have no worries about him on the feet. But getting taken down um, could be his biggest nightmare, especially against someone like Volkov. Volkov is a pretty explosive fighter. He's an explosive striker. He's filled with knockout power. And you add in a decent ground game. And that's where Walt Harris might, might fall here. Volkov can kind of make Walt Harris vulnerable in this fight. Harris would need to land clean shots, a finishing shot, actually, to win this fight, in my opinion. I don't think Volkov is going to make it easy for him. We look in the past when Volkov was fighting Greg Hardy, and he was using a lot of leg kicks. He was doing a lot to keep Greg Hardy at a distance, who has crazy knockout power. But he did a great job keeping Greg Hardy at a distance. And I think he's going to do the same thing here with Walt Harris. Knowing full well that Walt Harris has that knockout power, Volkov is going to capitalize on perhaps the ground game, knowing that Walt Harris doesn't ha have it as easy with that defense. And he's going to capitalize on the leg kicks. He's going to keep him at a distance. And I think he's going he's gonna to pick Walt Harris apart. I don't think that he's going to knock him out. Well, you know what? 
I take it back. He can knock him out. It's going to be tough. I was going to go decision on this one, but I changed my mind. In this very moment, I changed my mind. I'm going to go KOTKO for Volkov. I was going to go decision. But, I, I, you know, Walt Harris can be knocked out. So I'm going to say Volkov by KOTKO. Let me know who you guys have in the premiere chat in the comment section uh, down below. Now, the co-main event, guys. Robert Whitaker versus Jared Cannonier. This is a scary fight for a lot of reasons. We've seen Robert Whitaker, the former champ, a guy who was retaining his title for quite some time, although it was difficult to keep him active for some spurts of time. And then we've got Jared Kennedy. Oh, by the way, Robert Whitaker's kind of been on a little bit of a downslope, but it is what it is. Ever since his knockout to Izzy, it was a little difficult to kind of um, jump back on the Robert Whitaker thing. Um, but Jared Cannonier is a fucking explosive fighter to me. To me, this is definitely a great matchup. There's no doubt in my mind this is a great matchup. There's also no doubt that the winner of this this fight is going to be fighting Izzy for as the next challenger. Because no, no other fight makes sense. Now, Whitaker is fast. He's great with takedown defense. Um, he's got great finishing skills. His striking is phenomenal. His only weakness, and we saw this with Izzy and we saw it with Wonder Boy, is those pinpoint strikers. But where he kind of that kind of aids him is Cannoneer doesn't exactly fall under that umbrella of being a pinpoint striker. He's been KO'd twice before Cannoneer. So he does have to be careful of getting caught, but he does have that brute style um, in his fighting that he can put to the test here against Whitaker. Now, Whitaker has fought fighters with that same kind of style, with the power in their hands and stuff like that. But um, I think that Whitaker can handle it. The more I think about it, and I know a lot of people are going to be going with Cannoneer on this fight, and rightfully so, I just don't see Cannoneer escaping Whitaker's speed and his timing with those strikes. Whitaker has this tremendous instinct and I know he's kind of fallen off lately and he's just not, he doesn't seem like the, the same Whitaker, but I think, I think Whitaker has every intention of getting that belt back. He would be silly not to. And I know he's been going through this depression thing and all that, but at the end of the day, he wants his belt back. And I think that drive is going to push that instinct of his that he has inside the cage. Cannoneer is going to be a hell of a fight, but I don't think Cannoneer is ready for what Whitaker is going to bring to the table um, Saturday night. So I'm going to go with Whitaker by KOTKO in the third. A little bit of a stretch, but I don't think it's really that much of a stretch if I had to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with Whitaker. KOTKO in the third. It's a little bit risky. All right, guys. The main event of the evening. Wonderful, wonderful. I love, I love this fight for a lot of reasons. Khabib Nurmagomedov, my favorite guy. Justin Gaethje, freaking love him. I love both these fighters, so it was very difficult to say that one is going to win and one's gonna not, and one's not going to win. Um, you never want to say that one of your favorite fighters is going to lose, but I had to. I had no choice in this fight. I had to pick one to lose, and we know it's most likely going to be Justin Gaethje. Now, I saw the polls. We took a poll um, just recently about who you guys thought was going to win, and it was actually pretty freaking close, shockingly close. Although I know that I shouldn't be that surprised because Justin Gaethje does have the tools to beat Khabib Nurmagomedov. I know he does. And I'm sure I wouldn't tell you to put your money on Justin Gaethje. I don't think that would be a smart pick. Um, at the end of the day, Khabib is going to win. He's got the better ground game. We've, we've never seen Gaethje wrestle. We can say, oh, Gaethje has the wrestling, but we've never seen him utilize it. And he even says that he gasses out um, when he tries to wrestle. We also know that he said that if he gets to the ground, he would be more comfortable on the inside of the cage instead of against the cage because he's screwed if he goes against the cage with Khabib. All of these things in mind, Gaethje does have one thing that Khabib doesn't, and that's his striking. Khabib can strike, but not as well as Gaethje. Gaethje can also take a lot of damage before delivering a lot of damage. Now, I can't say I've ever seen Khabib, um, I've ever seen Khabib get clipped, uh, but with that said... He's only really ever lost like one or two rounds in his entire career. And the question here is, is Gaethje going to win a round or is Gaethje going to put him away? No. In my opinion, that's not going to happen. But if you have picked that, like, I can understand why you think he can win, but I don't think he will win. 
And I think there's a huge difference there that a lot of people aren't looking at. There's a lot of fighters who have the tools to win, but it's a matter of whether or not they will. And in this case, he just, Gaethje will not win against Javi Nurmagomedov. Nurmagomedov is just a beast. At the end of the day, he's just a beast. This guy's going to go 30-0 30 and 0 and he's going to retire. And <sighs> But it's going to be a hell of a fight. It's going to be a hell of a fight. If it lasts long. I have it ending in the second round. I have Khabib's submission in the second round. So I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say about this fight in the premiere chat. Also, um, how long do you think the round's going to go? Has your mind changed since we last discussed this? You don't really need a briefing from me on this one. You already know where I stand. Um, but it's going to be... I'm so fucking excited for this fight on Saturday night. All right, guys. That being said, thank you for watching Fight Briefing, episode number 33, where we're discussing UFC 244, Khabib versus Gaethje. We will be live tomorrow night for Fuka Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. And then we'll be live for the fights on Saturday, starting Saturday afternoon eastern time and saturday morning over here on the west coast so uh whatever time zone it is for you guys make sure you tune in it's gonna be a really really early card but it's gonna be so worth it to watch all right guys let me know who you guys have for the main card picks even your prelims if you want to let me know that that being said guys thank you so much for joining me tonight i hope you all had a fun 10 or 20 minutes that we've been on uh yeah Talk to you guys again soon. Don't be an a-hole. Be an M-M-A-hole.